Hello YouTube, it's Fidget here, and welcome to the second draft projections. This one we're gonna be doing on the sprinters, and with me today I've got the SMC250 and Hansball. Hello. Hi. I'd recommend after watching this video to go and check out their channels, cause they also do Pro Soccer Manager, and it's a great game, and they're great managers. Today we're gonna be speaking about the sprinters, and in 10th place we have a guy from the con Continental Pro Tour, from the team called Bardiani. His name is Sacha Madolo. He's a hidden gem. Last time it didn't get picked, um, which was kind of surprising actually, um, that no one actually thought about him. And certainly with the uh, matching system, the uh, chemistry like, system, yeah, the, chem the chemistry system facts, um, he can be really good in the sprints. Uh, especially with his 67 hill um, and a 71 downhill, he could also break away and have a chance to win. That would be some. Mysterical AI magic out of nowhere I've never seen before, but that'd be fun. Next on the list, we've got it a guy be. who was a leader man last year for Aston Nav. This time, he's probably not going to be a leader man, at least that would be a waste of powers. His name is Nasser Buhani. Certainly a good guy uh, for him for team. So, also, because you can just link him up with a whole team, <laughs> pretty much. You can, yeah. um, b because he is an FDG, you can link him up with Pino, Alfredo, Cazar, Federico, whoever you want, to be honest. The, the, uh, the French teams, the AG2Rs and the, uh, the Uscatels, um, they will be very useful with the chemistry system, especially for a guy like Buhani, so you can, uh, you can bump up that terrible 58 mountain stat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't believe there's a, that big of a difference between 58 and 60, but I bet you can feel it. But with Bohani having 72 hill and 82 sprint, 82 acceleration, if you can actually manage to link him up, that would really make a difference in the sprints. It would also help him to get more uh, secondary stats like stamina, resistance, and uh, recovery. Because at the moment he doesn't have any above 70. Yeah. Okay. Next one on the list. This guy did not do that good last year. I don't, I don't really remember what he did in the Tour de France. He's a Spaniard and he's from the movie star team. His name is Jose Rochas. I don't know where he was in the tour. I never saw him. Um, may mainly may because uh, we were using another database, probably, um, where he was like 74 sprint. Most likely. Um, but yeah. uh, we just didn't see him anywhere, not as a leadout man, not as a sprinter. Even, I think even not in the mountains or hill stages. But this time you gotta be careful, because that 75 hill, if he gets linked up with the 80 sprint and 81 acceleration, He's going to be a threat to Sagan, and that means a lot. And then with the plus two as well, you have the 70 mountain and 72 in stamina, resistance, and recovery. And also, again, the creepy downhill on the sprinters. <laughs> maybe, a, maybe a little breakaway. <laughs> that might be happening in the mountains. Next up, we had a guy who was so good at leading out Deacon Cup and Cavendish last year on Team Moonstar, which was controlled by Wub Wub Wub. This time, I think he'll get his own team. He's on the Mount Quebec. His name is Gerald Siolak. He's probably gonna do good because it's a mountain tour for Vuelta. You will not have any flat stages. And with that 72 hill that he already has, plus the chemistry bonus, he can do really good. Also, he can get 80 sprint and 82 acceleration. And as SMC would say, also the creepy downhill of 73. The sad thing though on Gerald Siolak? He's got no German riders in... Wait, he actually does. He's yes, got, he's got two. Stuff. <laughs> he's got two, my bad. I missed that one. He's got Andreas Stauff and Martin Rammer. But that's quite like some guys you have to sacrifice because you're never going to see these guys in the stages. You're, you're going to really have to sacrifice because a 70-rated sprinter is going to hold you back, especially in the draft, even if it is the final round. He's going to... Like, these guys are not even going to survive the second stage. Like... Yeah, I'd watch out for these guys to abandon real fast. Next up, we had a guy who abandoned on the Alp du S. He was third in the points classification, and he didn't get to keep that because he abandoned. He's one of Hansball's favorite riders, I know. <laughs> His name is Andre Greipel. Yeah, it was sad to see him uh, go out of uh, the Tour MLC. But, oh well, he got some nice uh, stages. Um, like, he, he got... Uh, to place himself real good in some stages. He won a stage before he abandoned, so he was lucky. But he's uh, yeah. well, he's very similar to Juan Jose Rojas, except he does have better sprint but less hill. Still 71 downhill, very good flat. 
and good stamina, resistance, and recovery for a sprinter. But this time though, he's gonna be difficult to match up completely, because Marcel Seebeck is the only other guy who's German or in Lotto Belasol. That means you can actually counterpick him pretty bad by picking Marcel Seeberg. And Marcel Seeberg is not a bad rider in itself. He could lead out your breakaway and be a, or he could be a brilliant domestique. With his almost two meter high body, a tall body, <laughs> you can see him from anywhere. So when he reaches his arm up to get water bottles, you don't miss him. Next up on the list, guys, we had a guy who was the never winning anything. He was an astronaut. It took him 21 stages to win in the MLC. His name is Marcel Kittel. Certainly not a bad pick, but the, hill is, the hills are gonna kill him so hard in this version. Um, well, that is so mountainy. Every flat stage has like 20% mountain in it. If, if it is in the middle or in the end. so. Yeah, Kittel really, I don't see him drafting, getting drafted anywhere above the ninth round because he just really won't do anything. No, he would just die. Like, even though he'd get to the finish, he'd be completely out of powers. <clears throat> so he'd just drag over the finish line pretty much. He'd be a, maybe a good leader, man, but that's about it. And then he'd abandon. Exactly. Next up on the list, we have a guy that you wouldn't really expect to be that low. This is fourth place, you gotta have in mind, and he's on Omega Pharma Quick Step. It's the previous world champion, it's Mark Cavendish. Yeah, again, this pretty much the same thing as uh, for Gripple and um, Kittle. The mountains in this uh, stage race are really gonna kill these sprinters. Um, although he is such a good sprinter, he will probably have some difficulties getting over the big hills. Uh, yeah, he is a guy though, but what separates him from all the other sprinters on a flat road and in stage races like the Tour last year is the 77 stamina and 78 recovery. Definitely. Yeah, he might definitely be having matters. a difficult time in the mountains and the hills, but he'll recover. Except, like, Kittle and Greipel would be feeling it the next day, Mark Cavendish would just throw stuff around in the bus and then recover those stats. Next up on the list, we have a guy that I believe baseball lover knows to heart. He was so disappointed to see him getting blocked, falling behind, working his own. And if this guy would have had a leadout train, he would have won a couple of stages. Yes, we're talking about Matthew Goss. Well, this guy I'm expecting to see in the front. Um, he did pretty decent in the tour, I would say. He got some uh, nice top 5 finishes sometimes. And his hill is cer certainly working in his favor. And just when you match him up with anyone, then uh, you can just get a good rider there. Yeah, there's riddle, there's no reason not to match him up because you have all kinds of people. Even if you just want to go for sprints, you have a Luke Durbridge. Or if you want to go for time trials, maybe Luke Durbridge or maybe Stuart O'Grady. <laughs> there's no excuse not to link this guy up. Yeah, that's, that's true. But I believe that Marf Matthew Goss, he's a good climb bar and he's a good sprinter. But he's just missing that last final cut. Like, if you can lead this out, this guy out perfectly, yes, he'd win the stage. But it all depends on your leadout train. Next up, second place, or second place, yeah. We have a guy you would have expected us to put at first place. But because he's so difficult to link up to get the maximum potential, we put him in second place. Yes, we're talking about Peter Sagan. Yeah, it, it was the first ever points classification just because he got over these mountains so smoothly. He he went in the attack sometimes just to get some points together for the um, for the general points classification. But this time with the linking system, there is another guy that can get better stats than him. Yeah, if uh, if anybody really wants to be that adventurous and takes Juraj Sagan, I applaud you, but you're <laughs> not gonna do well. It's a shame it's his older brother. I would expect it to be his younger brother, because he's, he's so bad cons like, compared to his younger brother, but that would be a shame to be an older brother, I guess. But yes, Peter Sagan is only second because of his Lincoln uh, possibilities. He did do really good in the Tour de France, but we don't think he will dominate as much as our first guy. Our first guy is Kittle's lead-up man, but in the world of Spania, he's going to be the main guy. Yes, we're talking about John Dinglecob. I would cer certainly um, like some people um, that, that will take uh, Dean Cobb. I took him in uh, the first season of MLC um, in the Giro, and he got a lot of stage wins for me. He was such a beast sprinter, and with a linking system, the chemistry system, he can get up to 73 hill and 82 sprint. 
which is really good for a sprinter. He will be unstoppable if you find one of the many Germans that are also on the Argos squad. Plus, the thing is, John Dingle Cup was a lead-up man for Cavendish in the Tour de France. He got third in the overall points classification, and he got consistently top five in, st in sprint stages. That kind of scares me. When I watch a lead-up man do that good, imagine if he was on his own. I'd say watch out for John Dingle Cup, because he's going to go real fast. So John, Ding John Dingle Cup actually remembers me a little bit of Greipel and Cavendish. Greipel was doing such a good job for Cavendish, and like now Dingle Cup did a really good job for Kevin there, so what can he do if he go stands alone? Yeah. So guys, we've gone through our top 10. Do you guys have any hidden guys that you would have thought, okay, maybe they could have made it into top 10, but we decided not to? I would say Tom Bonin is one of them for me. Um, he can get up to 71 hill and 79 sprint, but still, he, he probably can't uh, do as good as um, big cannons, but he can do decent. We also saw it in the Tour de France uh, version of the MLC that he did pretty good. I clearly remember the Shoot the Italia version where he was sprinting for every single intermediate sprint for no reason whatsoever. He was like, you know what, you're going to see my name, you're going to see my Belgian national jersey and just go for those, mountain, uh, those sprinting classifications. Uh, I think some more hidden gems would be the duo of Michael Matthews and Alan Davis. They both are good hillers and sprinters and paired with Paired with each other, they could be a lethal sprinting combination. And I have the last two guys who I believe you gotta watch out for. Actually, only one guy, actually. It's Chichi, or Kiki, as Hansbo has been known to say, or n known to <laughs> correct me on when I say Chichi. This guy is 32 years of age, and he's not bad at all. He's riding in the, in the Continental Pro Tour. He's got 79 sprint at maximum, and he's not gonna be difficult to link up. I'd say Chi Chi is a good guy. I'm gonna say Chi Chi because I just I'm known I just that's how I roll. <laughs> so watch out for this guy. He might be old, but he can definitely sprint. He's gonna have a difficult time getting over the hills. That's why we didn't put him in the top ten. But this guy in the Madrid stage, watch out for him because he can win that stage. So guys, thank you guys for watching this. Please check out Hans Balls and SMC's channels. They're both awesome video makers, and they help me with them. We'll see what could be better. Thank you guys for watching. If you have anything to say, say it now. <laughs> see you later. Cats.